Welcome to Light It Up, a podcast about resilient women balancing motherhood, their careers, personal lives, and all of the challenges that come along with being a superwoman. Each week, you'll be motivated to take action to lead, inspire, transform, and empower. Now, here's your host, Dr. Regina Mashira. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Light It Up. I want to take this time to thank you for tuning in to the podcast. If you're a returning visitor, thank you for continuing to rock with me. And if you're new to the podcast, welcome. I am excited about this episode, just as I am about each and every episode of Light It Up. Today, I want to talk about a topic that I'm extremely passionate about, and that's education. As a higher education professional and mom, I truly value education. I know that for many of you, the last six weeks have been quite challenging as your children have transitioned from in-person instruction to e-learning due to COVID-19. And while the transition is definitely an undertaking for parents and students, I know it is just as challenging for teachers who are also parents, particularly single parents. My guests today are Zykeia Sutton, a fourth grade literacy teacher from Las Vegas, Nevada, and Kimberly Ellis, a high school teacher and case manager from South Suburban Chicago. Zakia and Kimberly are going to share their experience balancing parenthood and their professional careers during this time of sheltering in place. They will also share some insightful tips for parents who are trying to navigate e-learning. Please join me as I welcome Zakia and Kimberly to light it up. Good morning. I want to thank uh, the two of you for joining me today for another episode of Light It Up. I have two very special guests, Kimberly Ellis and Zykeia Sutton. Um, Kimberly is here in the Chicago area in South Suburban, uh, Chicago, Illinois. And Kim, you are the mother of four children, 16-year-old, 12-year-old, 6-year-old, and a 5-year-old. And you're also a high school teacher and case manager, which means that you work in special education. Mm -hmm. And you're currently working on your doctorate in organizational leadership with an emphasis on organizational development. We got something in common there. And you've also self-published. So you're a self-published author of the book, From One Mother to Another, You Got This. And this book discusses how to balance motherhood and life, which is actually perfect because that's what we're going to talk about today. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. And Zakia, you are the mother of three children. I know you have an adult son and two younger children, I believe middle school. Middle school high school. school. Oh my goodness, middle school or high school. And you have been teaching elementary school for the last seven years. You're currently a fourth grade literacy teacher. And you were also the read by grade representative for your school. And next year, you will be working in the role as a math strategist. And you also are currently enrolled in a teacher leadership master's degree program through the University of Nevada at Las Vegas which means that you are based in Las Vegas, so. I am. But you are originally from? Chicago. Chicago. That's right. All suburbs. That's right. We're representing (laughs) Chicago today. So um, thank you so much for agreeing to come on and talk to me. Um, I wanted to talk to you all. I put out a call for people who are working in the field of education because I have so many friends who work in education. And we, uh, for the last month, many of us have been sheltering in place. We've been working from home, working remotely. Also, our children are home. Um, And for those of us here in, in the state of Illinois, Um, we were, the schools were physically closed until April 30th initially, and then Governor Pritzker announced that the schools would be closed until the end of the school year. However, our students are um, expected to participate in e-learning. So that means so many things for so many different people. 
And Zakia, what's the situation there in Las Vegas? Has your governor opted to um, keep the schools physically closed to the remainder of the school year, or is the verdict still out on that? I think the verdict is kind of still out. Our governor, Sisolak, um, is kind of leaving it up to the school district, and Clark County School District is, you know, the largest, fifth largest in the la nation, largest in the state. But um, the elementary schools have started distributing Chromebooks to every student. So without it being said, I think it's being said mm -hmm. that we're not going to return to the building and they want to make sure every student has some kind of technology to continue e-learning. So it hasn't been announced like Illinois, but I, I think it's going that way. Okay. And when, when is school slated? I know each school district is probably di uh, different in terms of when um, summer usually begins, summer break usually begins, but is it generally in May, the end of May, when students normally get out of school there? Yeah, ours is May 23rd. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's what I want to know, and, and I'm sure so many other people want to know. How do you, first of all, tell me, why did you all get into the field of education? I think we should start there. Um, so <laughs> ironically, um, education, when I was younger, if you asked me what I wanted to be, educator, teacher, never came out my mouth. Um, I, I was always, I wanted to do like marketing, public relations. Um, however, I math is not my strong point. And so I figured that out going through college <laughs> and I ended up in that space where I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Um, I bounced around a lot from college to college and ended up majoring in English. And um, that was because I was told it would get me where I wanted to go with less math. So actually one day I was talking to a friend and I was just, you know, thinking out loud. And he said, you know what? I think you will make a good teacher. He says, the way you break things down, the way you like to help people, I think you will make a good teacher. And I said, hmm, possibly. <laughs> so it just, it was like right then and there. It was like, okay, let's, let's try it. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I didn't know what else I was gonna do. <laughs> so um, I still ended up, I was almost done with my undergrad degree by the time this decision was made though. Um, I couldn't give Illinois State one more dime. I couldn't give them one more minute. So I just did the English studies degree and then got my master's in education. And I've been in education since 2012, almost right when I came out of undergrad. So. Okay, okay. And then what about you, Psyche? How did you get in the field? I'm similar to Kimberly. It's like we, we vibe it. It was definitely not my first choice. I went to school and got my bachelor's degree in um, mass communication and media arts. I started um, before I actually got started working in the field. I got married, had children. Then after I got divorced, I went back to school to go into public relations and the back end of mass communication. I started working, but I was then a single mother and it was taking me away from the kids too long, traveling downtown. I wouldn't get home till late. So um, a cousin of mine said, you're good with the kids at the church. You should look into education. Same way. So I went into the um, Governor State University Alternative Certification Master's Program for Education. So I had the bachelor's in communication. I had a bachelor's in PR, and then I went and got a bachelor, a master's, I'm sorry, in communication and a master's in education. So that's how I ended up getting into the field. I felt I could be with the kids more. Mm -hmm. I could be more attentive to them because now my times are a little more banker-ish. Mm -hmm. But I, I, that's what I thought. I didn't realize they were not going to be banker-ish <laughs> until I got in there. Right, right. And I think, um, I know it, now I've worked in the field of education. I work for Chicago Public Schools. I've taught, but I taught as a substitute teacher. Um, I also taught and teach occasionally as a professor in higher ed, which that's a totally different story. But I will say similar to, to you all, when I was an undergrad, I um, was majoring in criminal justice because my plan was to go to law school. And I was at the end, probably close to completing my degree, and I've been doing a lot of um, 
community service work, tutoring children at the neighboring um, school near UIC. And I was like, I want to be a teacher, but I didn't want to stay in school. So I went back and got a master's in education, but I opted to go the ed leadership route because I actually just wanted to work in administration. Um, I was sort of misguided, but here I am. Um, so it's, it's quite interesting how we all somewhere along the way, whether it was while we were still in undergrad or after working, decided that we wanted to go into that field. Um, so I guess my question, you, you mentioned the hours. As an educator, I think, what do you think is the number one misperception that people have about teachers? Because I often look at it as if, you know, it's not a, a profession that's necessarily respected. And in my role currently, I oversee teacher preparation programs at UIC. So we see students coming into the field wanting to be become teachers, um, but the demographics aren't necessarily like us in terms of those going in as undergraduate students. But I'm just curious to know, what do you think um, is the number one misperception about teachers and what can be done to kind of dispel some of those misperceptions? Um, first thing that comes to mind is that we are glorified babysitters. Um, honestly, I kind of hope that what's going on now is at least beginning to dispel that misconception because um, it's so much more than just, okay, I'm gonna walk into this classroom, I'm gonna talk a little bit and then I'm gone. Um, it's so much more behind that. Um, it's so much more after that. It's just like, it's, it's almost one of those things where unless you find a way to stop it, it does not stop. Mm -hmm. um, I, <laughs> people, you know, they're like, oh, well you get all summer off and you get, <laughs> First of all, <laughs> that comes at a price or rather a paycheck. So while I may get all summer off, um, so imagine what that means for finances. So it's either, okay, am I gonna do this, figure this out this summer, or am I still going to work summer school, which I have done. Mm -hmm. um, I, I typically work summer school and the one summer I worked, I did not work. I'm like, I don't think I can do another summer without working. Um, so I think there's that, you know, I think people think that once the bell rings, we're done. Not the case. Mm -hmm. um, contractually, in our district, we're required to stay 30 minutes after, but it, there, the parking lot is still half full sometimes way after that. So that's the first thing that comes to mind for me. Okay. What about you, Zach? Um, it's, it's about the same that we work from eight to three, mm -hmm. and then you go home and you're free all night, and then you have the weekends that you're free, and you have the summers that you're off. It must be fantastic. And all you have to do is sit there, hand some paper to some children, teach them their ABCs, and, and now the world is wonderful. Why are you complaining that you don't get paid enough? You know, you, it's easy. Definitely a misconception. First off, it's similar. No, no educator in America just has an eight to three. So no matter what your contract time is, we're there before the kids get there, we're there after the kids leave. You still have to prep for days. You have to get your lessons together. You have to meet with parents. You have meetings with administration. You have meetings with your team. So there are times that I didn't leave the school building till 7 p.m., mm -hmm. you know, and then had to be back at 6 a.m. for some other type of meeting. The weekends are not yours, really, because you're grading your papers. You're trying to plan based on how your students did on assessments. You're trying to revamp and plan so your weekends are now gone. And in the summer, you do get a portion of the summer off. But like Kimberly said, sometimes you have to, I've worked summer school almost every single year as well. So you'll work the summer school, but then even still, you usually, because of your license, 
you have to go to a number of professional development sessions. It's hard to do during the school year, so that's what you do in your summer. You go into all of these different professional development sessions, and then school gets back in earlier than the kids, so your summer is cut short. So it's not as rosy as they make it seem that our time is so short and that we, you know, we get paid for such a short amount of time because we don't get paid overtime. All oh of the God. extra we put in, we don't get paid overtime. And as far as like what Kimberly said about the glorified babysitter, a teacher is a nurse, a therapist, a social worker, the extra mommy, the disciplinarian, sometimes the warden. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. So it's while you're in the school during a regular day, you do many jobs more than just hand a piece of paper and A, B, C, you know, it's way more than that. And then if you factor into the, um, the salaries of teachers, but then you factor in the number of hours that you're actually putting in work, we're not talking about the eight, three day, but like you said, having the prep, having the grade papers, um, the other meetings that you have to attend that's in addition to the instructional time. Um, and then if you don't opt for extended pay, which it doesn't mean that you're getting extra money during the summer. It's not a bonus. Right. That's your salary spread out mm -hmm. over exactly. weeks. And people don't, I always hear people say, well, they get paid during the summer. Getting paid over the summer. <laughs> That's just your salary divided it by works for. <laughs> right. And so it's, it's so many misconceptions out there. Um, and maybe this will be a wake up call for the parents who have been at home with their children. I, I know, you know, we're all on social media. We see the posts, and, you know, um, Sometimes it's funny, but then sometimes it's like, no, this is, you know, what have you been doing all year long? Um, and so what do you think, um, how are you, because you all, both of you, you all have children. I know Kimberly, you have children who are slightly younger. Um, so I couldn't even imagine how you're able to even get anything done during the day if you're expected to do e-learning with your students. I don't know, each school district, of course, we know is set up differently. So some schools may require the teachers to maybe um, teach a session online or do Zoom or something like that. Um, and then as I can, you know, you have children, middle school, high school, so they have to be online doing their work. Kimberly, your, your children as well. How do you balance that? So everybody's online, you know, you, how are you making sure your children are getting the instruction or able to do their work, you know, while at the same time actually doing your job as an educator for other people's children? So Zakia, you wanna? Sure, I'll, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's hard because first off, Wi-Fi gets ate up, so everything slows down. I'm in the middle of a lesson with my students, my fourth grade students, and then it freezes and it shuts down and things of that nature, so you have that issue. But it's me trying to answer their question, help them with um, high school and middle school math and different type of questions and then flip the script and run over here and answer this question online because this fourth grade student is confused on literacy because I'm doing literacy for this school. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance of, it, it makes you feel like you're in a tornado whirlwind that's never stopping. Then your phone is constantly going off. You got messages coming in from somewhere. You got emails coming in you have to respond to. And they want you to do it really fast. And so it's, and then I have other teachers because I'm more of the, the teacher leader at my campus. Um, you know, teachers, how do you do this? I can't figure this out. Can you fix this for me? So you're on meetings with them. It's, it's crazy. It's better to be in school. So it's not like, oh, this is a vacation for teachers. We can kick our feet up. So yeah, I haven't really combed my hair necessarily since this whole thing started, but I've worked three, four, 10 times as much. Yeah. And what about you? I think a tornado whirlwind um, sums it up quite nicely. 
um, first, when you first asked, I'm like, the, I had to up my internet. I had to call and like redo my plan because I already knew it was not going to work. <laughs> um, and what I'm finding, so our district, we have not been mandated to do Zoom meetings or anything like that. We set up our Google Classroom. Um, and then I'm also a co-teacher. So I guess I do have a little bit, just a little bit of wiggle room where some of my responsibility is shared with another teacher. Um, so what I try to do, my, I, I work with my kids first, my, my birth to my children that I birthed. Okay. Um, and I try to get them, like get their stuff out of the way. I try to make sure that they're okay because mind you, I have the six-year-old and the um, 12-year-old. So that is first and sixth grade. Um, and I feel like even as an educator, my first grader, I'm like, this is kind of intense to, you know, for us to do every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. And then she's not really, um, let's just say she's not, she, she has a hard time focusing. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, Zakia, it's almost better to be in the building because in the building, they know you know, this is what it is. This is, this is what you come here for. Um, even mm -hmm. I'm distracted because I'm like, I'm at home. It's too many mm -hmm. things to do that. I'm like, wait, I could be doing this. I could be doing this. Oh, but I still need to work. Um, so I get them done. And then, um, our attendance policy, they allow the students to, as long as they submit attendance by two 30, the next day, they're fine. Um, so mm -hmm. that's one of my duties when they submit attendance in Google Classroom. So now, though, it's like I'm a day behind. So I have to go into Google Classroom, open Google Classroom, then I have to open PowerSchool. Okay, so let me minimize this screen and put it next to Google Classroom so I'm not switching back and forth. Do this attendance for the, the prior day. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's like, like you said, trying to help those students too because, you know, I'm like, well, hey, you submitted this assignment, but it's blank. Oh, well, I sent it to so-and-so's email. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so now we're hunting down assignments. So it, it really is a juggle. It's, it's a juggle. It's, um, it's interesting to say the least. You know, I um, was just thinking too, um, on top of the dynamics of trying to balance your day, um, you know, well, how do you, what's your outlet? What's your release? Because we've established that, you know, the, what the three of us actually have in common is that we are single mothers. Um, so our children, we're um, the custodial parent, primary care caretaker. So we don't have that option of having somebody else in the house, you know, to kind of take over some things or assist in that area. So how do you all manage to balance or find some balance or have you been able to? Um, I have not. Um, you know, they tell teachers have self-care. This is like made my self-care worse. Even though I'm at home, mm -hmm. it's made the self-care worse because I can't, even though the TV is right in front of me and I can binge what I want to binge watch, my mind isn't on that. I don't, I don't have the same energy, even though I'm sitting here, mm -hmm. I don't have that same energy because someone else is sending me a message, a parent is sending me a message, or a kid comes in and my email goes off from the school, one of the girls' school, because they need to turn in this assignment, and then my boss sends me. So it's, it's almost like I still don't have that self-care or that outlet. Even though I'm at home 24-7, I still don't have that release, so to say. Um, the only thing I can say is that after we're done with that, with their work anyway, um, I have implemented what I call chill time. Um, my kids, one out of three was the only one who took a nap on the regular school day anyway, because she's still in pre-K. Um, and so chill time is basically after we've done work, we've eaten breakfast, we've eaten snack, we've eaten lunch. I need you all to go in your room. Take your iPads, you know, do watch TV, whatever the case may be. Um, but it's chill. We just need some time to unwind. Now, does that always mean, hey, I'm gonna sit here and have a glass of wine or something? No. 
um, at that point, I may start working or I may clean up. Or, but I, I guess the way I'm looking at it is at least I'm doing it without little people running under my feet. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, at least it's quiet for a moment and it's not, okay, you have to do this. Come on, we got to finish this. Um, so that's pretty much it. I tried to get them to bed too at a whatever's considered decent. But at the same time, you know, it's still that same battle. Okay, so now I got them to bed. Am I going to sit here and, like you said, try to binge watch this show? Or am I going to try to tackle something that I know I didn't get a chance to do? earlier um so i don't i can't necessarily say i found a balance mm -hmm. but i am definitely um I'm, I'm trying i'm trying i'm definitely improvising as best as i can right i i completely understand because i find myself working longer i know I've, i'm working harder being at home um because everybody else at the university is working from home so they're seems to have been some um what i deem to be unreasonable expectations like i would get emails at 9 30 at night mm -hmm. from people and so i had to set up boundaries for myself i'm not responding i may have mm -hmm. my laptop up and i may see the notification but i i feel like the moment that i respond you'll think that that's okay mm -hmm. right. and so i um wait until the next morning 8 30 a.m i'll respond to email inquiries what have you and then i end my day um at 4 30 or 5 o'clock sometimes it doesn't turn out that way um and as far as my children even though so you know the twins they're in high school my youngest is in middle school but i found like they were always coming into my space asking me questions and i'm trying to be on a conference call and you know and so what i had to end up doing with them is telling them what my schedule was for the day to so maybe say hey during between this time and this time i have a conference call so you know you, you can't come in ask me questions and say when are you going to cook or <laughs> you know do whatever so i found that when i set up or gave them a, a schedule so that they had some idea of when i was going to be off work mm -hmm. that actually helped um I don't think I've necessarily found, I haven't been sleeping well during this whole period either. So that's a totally different story too. So that's been a bit of a challenge, but it is, I would say it is very difficult to try to exercise self care, find ways to take care um, of yourself during this time, especially, you know, when you're in the house with your children every single day like i was to the point where i was counting down and i was like i've been with them for 30 days <laughs> great um love them to death but you just need the space yes but what i want to do i want to take a quick break um and then we'll come back on the other side okay hey everybody i just want to take a moment to thank you for tuning in to another episode of light it up Light It Up is a weekly podcast that airs every Tuesday. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you'll receive notifications each time a new episode is available. Light It Up is available on all podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Anchor, and iHeartRadio. You can tune in wherever you listen to your podcasts. And you can also view the podcast on Facebook or YouTube whenever I have a special guest. Make sure you subscribe, give a rating on Apple Podcasts, and like the Light It Up Facebook page. You can also follow me on social media using the handle at Light It Up Podcast. Now, let's get back to the show. All right, so we are back on the other side, and we were talking about uh, self-care and how it's been such a challenge trying to find balance while you've been at home with your children and still um, meet the expectations and demands of your job as educators. Um, my question to you is what, what advice would you, no, not advice. What's one thing that you want parents who have children at home to understand or try to take into consideration as we are all dealing with this pandemic and dealing with trying to 
make sure our children are educated. What do you want parents to know or take into consideration? If you can tell a parent one thing. Um, if, if I can tell my parents one thing is not that I'm trying to um, punish you or, you know, stick it to you, you know, kind of thing with assignments that I give or, um, or things of that nature. It's like, it's not a punishment. I'm trying to keep the games that my students made on track to the best of my ability. And then at the same time, I won't say it's a strong arm, but it's also the district telling me things that I have to do. So I'm, I may not want to call your house every week, you know, but the district is saying, if you don't respond to an email, I have to call you every week. So it's kind of like, it's, it's some things that we're doing because we still love and care for these babies and want them to have their games and not get behind. And it is some things that we're mandated to do. So just work with us. We're not just trying to stick it to you or come up with some ridiculous junk just to make life hard for you. We're really doing the best we can too. Okay. What about you? Um, definitely the whole, like, we're in this together you know, work, work with us because we're trying our best to work with you and your student. Um, and one of my, my old high school teachers posted the other, the other day though, and um, she definitely said, um, parents, please, you know, do the best that you can. Do the best that you can, do what you can, use the resources that you have, but also please remember that we are all adjusting, um, including your student. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind because, you know, we can, we can deal with why we don't want them to lose gains at all. Um, that's something that we can at least address. We can deal with later on or, you know, the next school year, but it makes it hard if we're now dealing with even deeper socio-emotional issues, um, that, that type of stuff we can't fix. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, try to keep everything in perspective. Nobody's out to attack you. Um, like you said, but just we're all in this together and just adjust and just do the best that you can, just like we are. What do you think um, is, um, I guess, the impact? I mean, none of us really know the impact that this is going to have on our students academically, right? Um, for most students, they are missing the last three months of physical in-person instruction and and with us not knowing what's going to happen in the fall whether we'll even be able to return to a physical structure you know a building in the fall what do you think the impact will be on students oh on oh that's a that's a hard one yeah um, it, it seems like it should be easy but that's a hard one. Um, I know, first off, part of the impact is going to be however way this virus has affected them. Because I called one home already and like that nightmare call happened when I'm calling to speak to a parent and to find out that the parent passed away oh, wow. the previous week. So you're going to have some students who are dealing with that emotionally because they lost someone during this time. Um, and then you're going to have the the kids who have adapted to whenever they want to type of learning to get back into a building and now we need to structure you back to you know a time schedule type of thing mm -hmm. so i think that that's something that's going to be hard to work back into getting them back into the whole idea of structure and dealing with their emotions based on how this virus affected them yeah, that's really Absolutely good. agree. Um, I'm already prepared for whenever we go back to here. Why can't you just, why can't we do this online? Why can't we just, you know, do this in Google Classrooms? Mm -hmm. I had um, parents of some students who are already gunning for online classes, like a online curriculum for their student for various reasons. And, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't offer that. And so now I'm like, well, you know, I, I, hey, I hope you got what you wanted, but, you know, at the same time, absolutely structure because it was difficult in the first place. And online instruction is actually 
a lot harder than teaching face-to-face -face because mm -hmm. at least when you're teaching face-to-face, -face, if students have questions, they can ask you in that moment mm -hmm. while you're um, giving the instruction. Whereas when you're online and everybody's not on, and it's not set up in a way where everybody can be online at the same time, you're, you have to be responsive to those messages, the inquiries or what have you. So mm -hmm. it, it certainly is a lot more work. That's one of the reasons why I stopped teaching online because it was just too much work. And I only had, you know, a students, maybe 10 or 12 students in an online course, but it was a lot. Um, and then Kim, because I know you um, teach, uh, you're a co-teacher, so you have students who um, are, classified as special ed so they have ieps what about that in terms of the level of the differentiated instruction how do you even manage to do that are there different assignments for students in your classroom if they're at different levels if they have different requirements on their iep and how are their needs and services being met um, well, so the thing about this class, with it being a cold talk class, um, the other teacher and I, we have already worked together for three years or so or whatever. Um, so we had already um, kind of addressed that because we go off of, like, even if they're not special education, we look at levels, you know, um, because um, even if they're not sped, sometimes they still need modifications. Mm -hmm. So most of the work in the class is already modified. Um, so because we still have general ed students struggling with the work and the work was already modified from a special education classroom. So all of it's already modified. Um, so there were really no you know, changes as far as, as the work mm -hmm. that needed to be changed. And um, hopefully, you know, everything else that they needed is being met at home. Because again, like you said, online, we can only do so much. Right. So we make sure that the work is, you know, at level or at whatever that level may be. Um, and we are like, uh, like I said, with what we're doing, Usually we have like a late work policy and everything. We take late work, you know, just turn it in. Some points are better than none. Um, what we've been doing, they get a week's worth of work mm -hmm. and it's broken down. So they may have seven assignments, but we break it down to the point, okay, look, Monday, this is what you do. Tuesday, this is what you do. Wednesday, this is what you do. Um, like you, we are open for questions. We offer clarification. Um, and then, so technically they have a week to do their work. So we're not looking for, we give you this assignment on Monday. It needs to be in by Tuesday. We literally have been going from Sunday to Sunday. Um, and even still, even after that week, we're still accepting late work. Um, just take a couple of points off. Um, I'm still, I'm, because well, a lot of we split grading so I know mm -hmm. I've been um, a little bit more lenient as well even with the late points just because mm -hmm. I don't know what type of support they are or are not getting at home um, you know I don't know if they completely understand because when you look them in the face you know mm -hmm. when you see them sitting there doing nothing or you know I can't see that now. So we, the work is modified already. We just really try to take into consideration everything that's going on. Um, we don't do anything that will negatively affect their grade at this point. Okay. So you all are working seven days a week. You all are mo uh, mother, mothers to multiple children who are in school, who still need your support, who still need your attention and your single moms is that at that and you're in both in school um so what are you going to do to try to take care of yourself because you know here's where the counselor in me comes in <laughs> because if you're not carving out time to take care of yourself how are you going to be able to do all of those things Hmm. Um, 
I am, just like you said, I am now trying to make my virtual office hours. Okay. So um, I will stop because I've been online with children at 8.30 p.m. because they are trying to figure out an assignment. It's like, you know, you had all day, why wait till now? But then it's like my heart string would be, okay, let me go ahead and do it. So I am now making those office hours where this is my cutoff. This, this is it, this is all I'm, I'm done. And even the same with my children. It's like, you know, we're all gonna have to be mommies and, and stuff and, and this point. So tonight is your dinner night while I go relax. You know, it's your dinner. I don't care if it's hot dogs or french fries, you know. So I'm trying to start delegating and, you know, cutting some stuff off because it, it is getting overwhelming mm -hmm. and it will make you shut down. So trying to learn to delegate and organize a little bit. Okay. Same. Um, I, I've, I've, I think I implemented the office hours early on, mm -hmm. um, because I do have alerts on my phone and I do get alerts from Google classroom at all hours of the night. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And like you said, a genius, because at some point they'll be like, oh, well, she responded to me at one thirty in the morning. So mm -hmm. let me, we can't do this. <laughs> we cannot. The email off your phone. Yeah, yes, I need to take the Google alerts. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, I because do it, it definitely, one morning, I just put my phone on do not disturb, just mm -hmm. so I didn't hear anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I also need to go back to originally, um, my phone would go on do not disturb automatically at 9pm at night. Mm -hmm. I had taken it off, I probably need to put that back on. Um, and like you said, Zakia, my oldest is 12. She can get in there and throw something in the oven or <laughs> some hot dogs. Um, and I had to stop beating myself up for, because, you know, I'd be like, man, I just ordered out last night. I don't want to order out again. But then I'm like, but who's going to cook? I'm yeah. not cooking. There's nothing for her to throw in the oven right now. Instacart hasn't come. So I just, I just had to, I had to take my own advice that I'm giving the parents. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the best that I can. Mm -hmm. So long as my children are safe, they are fed, they are mentally well, and I'm still doing my job and they're getting their, their stuff done, I'm learning to be okay with that at this point because it's an adjustment. And how are, and Zakia, you can speak to this too, how are your children, how have they been able to adjust to what's been going on. I mean, how does your, what grade is your daughter who's in high school? Is she, She's freshman. Freshman. Okay. So freshman. Oh yeah. So freshman year for her. Um, I know Shia is in seventh grade. Yeah. So yeah. She's in seventh. How have they been doing as far as just adjusting? Um, Shia, the seventh grader initially was gung ho. Yes, school is out. Wonderful. You know, but um, she thought it was going to be short lived. Mm -hmm. So now that she found out, and, and as I was telling you before, she's in a magnet performing arts school. So she auditioned mm -hmm. for some higher level drama class. She got in this class and she was looking forward to performing. So now she's crushed because that opportunity is gone. So it's affecting her in that way where she wants to go back. With my freshman, she was already kind of quiet, that quiet type of freshman, um, but she was more sociable when school was in. So now that this is over, it seems to be reversing that where she's more shut in. So now I'm afraid when it's time for school to start, is she going to be shut down again? Can she be more socialized? So it's, um, it's affecting them, not necessarily horribly negative, but it's still having that impact that's got to be reversed when school returns. Yeah. And Kim? Um, the 16-year-old, he's loving it, but I have to watch him because like you said, it, it takes a lot more to do school online and he's not disciplined at all. So um, even though he's not here, he's in Arizona, I'm still like on him. Hey, hey, did you do your work? Let me see. I want to, you know, mm -hmm. um, the seventh grader, my 12 year old, Saleya, she, mm -hmm. I, she's up and down. Mm -hmm. um, when school was in before any of this started, she's like, I'm tired of those kids. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to, me and the teacher. And I was just like, okay, 
And now I think she did think it was going to be like a little vacation. And then she realized, oh, shoot, mommy's an educator. So that's not happening. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. And then she's like, well, why do I have to keep getting on these calls? Why do I have to? And I'm, and I'm like, okay, look. And I find myself explaining to her and trying to calmly do it because I need her to understand that that type of energy, if you will, it makes it all worse, mm -hmm. um, even for me, because I'm trying to figure out how to help her. But she, you know, she's doing the, the schoolwork okay. Um, I'm working on her with some type of routine because she tries to stay up all night mm -hmm. and tries to sleep all day. And I'm like, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, the little ones, Delilah, that's my six-year-old, she is struggling a little bit. Um, her class does do weekly Zoom calls, so at least she gets to see their faces. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's still, um, she misses her friends. And like I said, it's it's difficult to get her through the work. Um, and the five-year-old, she's always just kind of in her own world. So, <laughs> you know, her whole thing is, well, when the coronavirus goes away, when the coronavirus <laughs> stops, when it's not here anymore, can we? So she's planning for the future. But, you know, we, they're, they're, they have their moments, though, which is to be expected. So what I, just listening to you all talk and share um, your experiences, number one, I know that you all just, by what you all do, being, you know, full-time parents, full-time employee, employee, school, you all are definitely, definitely exemplify women who persevere. So I just want to thank you all, you both, for your dedication and commitment that you all have to your students. Um, I think that if more parents could see, you know, you you all as educators you all have lives outside of being that classroom teacher and i think it's just so important for people to start showing some grace you know that's what i really hope that with all of this that we've been going through that people can learn how to show one another grace because being in education i i see both sides i see the sides of the parent who um, don't understand a day in the life of, a, of an educator um, where they have some what we could deem to be unreasonable expectations. Um, and then uh, for me as a parent, you know, I always try to approach as far as the education of my children. I've always been involved in their education, but I try to approach it where I'm a partner with their teachers because I want them to understand, I respect what you do. I know it's a hard job. Um, and it's also, unfortunately, a thankless job. Um, and, and just dealing with this crisis right now, everybody had to try to shift and transition like without warning. There was no preparation for this. So sure we're in the year 2020 we've got all of this technology and access to technology but when educators go through their teacher preparation program they are not going through this program to become a certified licensed educator to teach online they're going to school to teach in person to do you know lesson plan you know what have you to be able to implement differentiated instruction, et cetera. They weren't licensed to become online educators. So I think, you know, we've got to um, allow some room for there to be, you know, this is kind of a trial, trial and error. Like we're all learning as we're going through, going through this. So I wanted to actually be able to bring you you all on the show so that people can hear like the real behind the scenes stories because I don't think that people really truly understand. I mean some some do, some get it. Um, but for the most part what I see publicly displayed on social media, maybe I need to get off social media for a little bit, it it really um, bothers bothers me a lot. And I know that you all also have the expectations from your school leaders who also have not been in the classroom, many of them, in years. So 
you know, they have some expect level of expectation that, you know, just probably can't be met, um, especially if you don't have the, um, the essential tools and equipment that you need. And then I think also what we, what we've always known, but what we see prevalent is that this situation is definitely showing that there is, um, um, a, a, a digital divide. There's a divide between class, social, economic status, because, um, who's to say just because you're a teacher, like Kim, you said you had to increase your internet service just so you could actually be online, right? Who's to say that every teacher has access to technology, has internet in the home, has a, a working laptop or computer, and then the expectation to be able to do your job on a laptop without an additional monitor or whatever, you know? There are just so many things that people have not taken into consideration. Um, so I, um, do you guys have any closing thoughts or comments that you want to make? Maybe if you could just share, how do you remain motivated given in light of everything that's going on and in, um, given that you don't have as much time as you need to take care of yourself? Um, what keeps you going? What keeps you motivated? to still be able to remain in the field of education and to still give 110% to your children. And then I don't know how much you leave in for yourself. <laughs> but how do you, how do you continue? Um, I will say that throughout this whole thing, I've been, you know, I, I joke a lot about my job and everything, but I'm very grateful. Um, Cause you know, so many people pretty much just lost everything. They're not getting a paycheck They're, You know, it, it was just done. Um, so, I, and it's not necessarily the paycheck, but it's just the principle of it all that reminds me, this is the field you chose. This is the field you're in. And clearly it's not going to stop. There's a need for it. There's a need for what you do. Um, so I think it's, it's pretty much, and then even looking at my kids, teachers, you know, I'm just like, it, it just kind of pushes me. Cause it's like, look, you can't give up because once you stop, like you said, everything and everybody else stops. So sometimes I'm not motivated, but I sometimes, and I, I just have to take that minute and I will take my nap, <laughs> but, um, I think it's just the principle, the driving force behind everything at this particular point me i think that this is this should um change the education system as a whole because the system is slightly archaic um at least our our united states education system um i think is ex showing and exposing a lot of the flaws a lot of the gaps um so i'm hoping that when this is over even programs like your teacher prep program may start incorporating hybrid learning and digital learning as part of the curriculum so that it when if something like this happens again it won't be such devastation um that the school districts will look at the economic gaps that they have the wool will just be removed from people's eyes based on how education is unbalanced is dated you know i'm hoping that when all is said and done that's the biggest lesson that we get out of this is that we do need to reform our system. Absolutely. I think they that, are saying it'll happen again. So I hope we're ready. <laughs> right. Absolutely. We definitely, um, we can look at this. This was kind of like the practice run, but you're right. Mm -hmm. Sakia, we're going to have to definitely make some changes because, um, you know, we just, we were not prepared. And if something like this should, you know, continue or happen again at just even a greater magnitude than what it has already, I'm afraid to see what the end result will be. But I just want to thank you all again for sharing um, your personal story, your experience. Um, again, hopefully the listeners will gain something from what they've heard. 
And I want to encourage you all to just keep doing what you're doing. I'm so proud of you ladies and all that you're doing. And if you ever need to talk to somebody, you can call me. So I, I may need to be your accountability partner to make sure I check in with you guys to see if you're taking some breaks for yourself. So you all try to enjoy the remainder of your day and thank you. And I will be in touch with you guys soon. Thank you. Thanks for joining me this week on Light It Up. Make sure you visit my website at www.lightituppodcast.com or www.ajinamohammed.com. You can also find me on social media using the handle at Light It Up Podcast. If you like what you've heard, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, I'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or you can simply tell a friend about the show. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. Until next time, light it up and shine bright like a diamond.